So we've got the table saw. We're just going to go over basic cuts, basic uses of the table saw, and basic parts. We've got the fence. We've got the adjusting knob to lock the fence. We've got the switches down here. We've got the red emergency switch, and then we have the regular red and yellow switch. And then you've got the raise and lower wheel, and you've got your tilting wheel here. All of them have a lock knob that you need to be aware of and make sure that it's unlocked anytime you are going to move anything. So now I'm going to lock off the tilting wheel because I already got it straight. We have the blade guard and we have what's under here is a kerf knife. The kerf knife is used to split your wood so it doesn't bind on each other and come back in and shoot back at you. Also uh, the anti-kickback. So when a piece of wood is underneath this, that kind of grabs it so it's less likely to come back at you. All right. So those are some of the basic parts for that and then you have the miter grooves, miter groove gauge. Miter groove gauge moves to different angles. You can see that if I undo this, it'll move around to different angles and you can make different cuts. I technically prefer the miter saw to make my miter cuts, but you can do it on here. You can do cross cuts with this, I'll demonstrate all that. Do uh, with the grain cut, which is uh, typically called ripping, and then there's a cross cut, which is a cross what? The grain. You guys are going to be an easy class to work with. All right, so let's just do a typical rip cut. Could somebody please go turn on the vacuum for me? Just run over there real quick and hit that black switch on the wall. Don't worry about vibrating at this point. All right, so the vacuum system is automatically connected to this. You don't have to open anything up. You can see right down here there's a tube, so it's going to suck up most of the sawdust if everybody's keeping the interior of the table saw clean. The interior, if you look inside, yeah, we need to vacuum that out again. Alright, so let's just do a typical rip cut. I'm going to bring the fence over and take the minor gauge out. I'm going to take some material off of this. I'm not doing a, uh, do a little cut line. Use a hand tool. All right, so I'm going to take a little off. Got to lift this up. Kind of gets in the way, but safety. Hold that back from the blade. Oh yeah, and also to check to make sure that cuts just above the blade, I mean above the wood. So that should cut through all of it without me bringing my hand down and getting all ground up. I'm going to lock this off so that doesn't move from the vibration. Bring that back over. That's solid green. Bring the red switch forward. I'm standing to one side or the other. I typically prefer this side because I can see more the fence doesn't block my view. So I'm using a foot stick so I can keep my fingers more than four inches away from the blade. Just in case. So I'll start this. I'm not using what's commonly called a feather board where you can put the fence up against that. I'll demonstrate that another time. But I'm going to start the cut with my fingers right here, applying slight pressure towards the fence, pressure with the push stick down on the wood, and then forward. Okay, now see how that piece of wood stuck in there? It's going to come out. All right, go it's in there. I'm going to set everything down, hit the red switch, and just to be safe, I'm going to hit the little switch. Wait for that to stop. I'm going to look at the blade, take that off of there. So I went right through the knot nice and slow. So what I've done is so I've got a nice straight cut. If this side was squared off, if we were at a 90 to 90, this side then would then be at a 90 to 90. Does that make sense? 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So then I'd be able to take this and run it on this side, and I'd get a nice flat 90 degree cut right here. Alright, so that's ripping with the grain. Now there's a possibility when you 
cut this, the, the nut is loose and it can fly out. So be aware of that. When I'm ripping, if the piece of wood is shot back, it would have missed me because I'm into one side or the other. I am never straight on into the cut line. How's my time? How much time will we use? 520. Alright, stop it.